Hello everyone! Hello! Thank you for commenting on our videos. That's right, we really really appreciate it. And on the comments that we see, everyone says so many nice things. Especially about how cute Mina and Taito are. There is even a comment about you, Yuka. Bijin na oksa. Right? <laughs> so, thank you very much. And in those comments, we also received a couple of questions. She's gonna read a couple of those questions out to me, and then I'm gonna try to answer them. All right, let's get to it. Yuka, what's the first question? Okay. Okay, so I think this is a comment regarding the video where I talk about my past, right? Mm -hmm. How yes. I became a bilingual. And that's a very good question. Uh, I went from Japan to Canada, Japan, America. And so I think the number one thing is children learn languages really, really quickly, right? Yes. But they also forget languages very, very quickly. And so I experienced that firsthand. But to answer the question, when I moved from Canada to Japan, at first I knew a lot of English. But after a few weeks of being in Japan, I wasn't using English, I had no need for it, and so I forgot almost all of the English that I learned while I was in Japan. Oh my goodness. Right? <laughs> but my sister Meg, she actually went to an Eikaiwa school, so she never forgot her English. Why only Meg? I was too young, and I wasn't using a lot of English in the first place. But when we moved back to New York, now I had to use English again. And so like I said in the video, the first couple of days or weeks, I remember being very nervous and scared. But after a couple of weeks, it was no problem. And the reason is because that English was still somewhere in my brain, right? Even though I forgot it and I couldn't speak English, parts of the English sounds, English words, they still remained in my brain. And so I think it was a lot easier to retrieve that information. That's why whenever Japanese parents bring kids to Eikaiwa schools when they're really, really little, yeah. I think that's so important. Yes, yes. Even if the kids don't speak much, it's all being inputted into their brain and they'll be able to retrieve it uh, more easily in the future. Uh, my dad used uh, English for his work, so I don't think he ever forgot. And Omi, of course, used English uh, when she was outside, yes. uh, grocery shopping and whatnot. But other than that, she didn't have much use for it. When she moved back to New York, I think it was about the same. Oh, I also wanted to share this story. Um, when I first moved to New York, yes. remember, I forgot all the English yes. that I learned. And on maybe the first or second day... That's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's Your comment is funny. Yeah. So anyways, on the first or second day, I was on the school bus. And when I got on the school bus, I realized, oh, I forgot my bag. In, on the bus? Uh, I forgot my bag in uh, Omi's car. Oh, uh, yeah? And now that I was on the school bus, I didn't have my school bag. Oh, I, I hear about this. I told you about that, right? <laughs> and I was panicking so much. And I remember crying because I didn't know what to do. And Meg helped me out. And she said, okay, June, this is what you need to say. You need to say, I forgot my bag in mommy's car. And so we kept practicing that over and over yes. again. And by the time we got to the school, I was like, oh, okay, Meg, I think I got it. Mm -hmm. I was really nervous. But I was like, yes. okay, I need to tell this mm -hmm. to my teacher. Mm -hmm. So we get out of the bus, I'm looking around, and then suddenly I recognize a car. It was a gray Nissan Maxima. And I was like, wait a minute, I know that car. That's Omi's car. <laughs> and so as soon Always as I got coming, yeah. as soon as I got on the bus, oh well, I guess Omi realized that I'd forgotten <laughs> my bag. So she drove to the school nice, uh, nice. to deliver the bag to me. So I remember being scared, but I also remember how nice yes. uh, Meg was to me, yeah. helping me out, and of course how nice Omi was. 
you didn't use that place, yeah? I didn't need to, but... That's feature. No, but because I did <laughs> hanpuku uh, renshu. Yeah, repeat it, repeat it. Right? I always uh, remember that phrase. <laughs> okay, what's the next question? Next question. And, oh, uh, it's in English. Okay. How do you? I'm watching your video for the first time. Thanks to YouTube London recommendation. How would you define your first language, English or Japanese? Very good question. So, to get technical, my first language was Japanese. Mm. Okay, that's the first language that I learned because Omi and Grandpa always spoke to me. Yeah, in the, in the family, yeah? Yeah, at home, exactly. And so that's probably the first language that I learned. But when people ask me that, mm. and many people do ask me that, I always answer English. Mm. Not because it was my first language, but because it's my main language. Obviously, I'm more fluent in English and I spent more time in the US and so I feel more comfortable speaking English. But more than anything, when I'm speaking English, I feel like I'm myself, right? Like Mina, you only know English speaking daddy, right? Right, and that's by choice. That's who I am, right? What do you think? When I speak English, am I different than when I'm speaking in Japanese? No, it's not different, but yeah. First time I'm a little bit confused over something. That different people. Oh, it's the Japanese, Japanese June and the English June. Yeah, like I guess you have a kata, right? Yes. And so there's the Japanese. You mean like English June, not Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I know. One time I yelled at you in Japanese and then you started crying, remember? Yeah. Why did you sing the Japanese like that? I guess you weren't used to it, huh? So everyone has different kata or characteristics, right? And so when I'm speaking English, I think that's the real kata. That's when I, you know, the most yeah. natural. Yeah. When you, you speak in the Japanese, a little bit the, like like that. <laughs> Part of it is, you know, I feel really nervous and I'm not confident with my Japanese. And then, and then always you using Japanese to the boss or something to the, my my father and the mother. Right. That's why a little bit that nice, like politely Japanese. Right. That's why a little bit kachikoche and the, like the don't mistake like that like. Yeah, yeah, I overthink things, right? And when I'm talking to my in-laws, so yeah. Yuka's mom and dad, of course I need to use what? At least tenego, right? Yes, that's why. Right. And so, yeah, I, f I feel very that's rigid. That's why I feel like you're a little bit different. English more flying cool, or like true. natural. But I feel it too. I feel unnatural when I'm speaking Japanese. <laughs> to you, I feel comfortable, right? Yeah. Because that's how yes. you know we've always communicated. Yeah. But yeah, whenever I'm talking in Japanese and you're near me, I feel a little strange. Yeah. Just the Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was a very good question and a question that I get asked very often. Okay. 始めまして。私事ですが、海外に住んでいるので英語に触れているんですけど。どのくらいのレベル話したらバイリンガルって言ってもいいのでしょうか。So what is the you know definition of being a bilingual? Also a very good question. And when I'm doing these videos, I often do a lot of research on bilingualism. Uh, I know a lot of books about uh, bilingualism, so I'll link them in the description. According to what I read, there's technically no single definition of what a bilingual person is. Depending on what you read, some people will say, as a child, uh, learning two languages concurrently and having proficiency in both. But there are others who say you can become a bilingual even after you're an adult, mm -hmm. right? So where do we draw that line? What's the difference? And in my opinion, a bilingual person is able to switch back and forth between two languages uh, with no problem. Yeah. Very smoothly, <clears throat> very easily, very naturally. And I think that's what makes someone a bilingual. So if you're a Japanese person and you're studying English, maybe you have to first think in Japanese, translate that into English. I don't think that's bilingualism yet. Hmm. But after you practice to the point where you listen in English, you think in English, and you respond in English while being Japanese, mm -hmm. then I think that is definitely uh, a bilingual. So it's probably uh, more to do with your thinking process. 
What do you, What about you? Are you a bilingual, Ika? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I can't say that. Why? Because we, you, you said that you're thinking about the English in English, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. You can't do that? Sometimes, but always I'm thinking of the English in Japanese mm -hmm. and then translate and then say that. How about you? Do you think in English? How about when you're in Hoikuen? Do you think in Japanese or in English? If my friend is um, teaching me English, I will speak in English. Ah, uh, but otherwise, it's, you're just in Japanese mode, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm the same way. In our brain, we have a switch, right? And so when I'm around Japanese people and I'm speaking Japanese, obviously the Japanese switch is on. And when I'm around English speaking people, my English switch is on. But being a true bilingual being, means being able to switch back and forth smoothly and so I think Mina can do that yes right Me? yes you pumpkin that's a good thing and I also heard that if you're a bilingual as a child uh, you're more able to think about other people mm -hmm. so you'll notice in our very early videos mm -hmm. when Mina was maybe one or two years old she's talking to me in English but if let's say Omi is around yeah. she'll speak in Japanese yes, yes, so yes. she already recognizes oh Omi is a Japanese speaking person. Yeah. Daddy is an English speaking person. So having that ability I think really translates to more empathy and thinking about things from other people's perspectives. Okay, is that it? That's it, but how about this comment? Hajimemashite. BB family ga daisuki de kochira no bazling gal family mo mini kimashita. Ga hanashikata ga yukkuri me na no de shoshinsha no watashi wa kochira no family ni mo sugoku mi ryoku wo kanjimashita. すごい見ることです。子供二人とも口が近いので最高にいい英語の勉強になります。また初心者すぎて英語の現在なのか過去なのか未来なのかの使い方やバッチフィコーズダンの使い方がわかるような動画も作ってほしいなと思いました。これから
And because he switches between English and Japanese, I also shadow the English too. It helps me kind of switch back and forth. And I do shadowing before big presentations in Japanese or、oh. big meetings in Japanese. Like you said, it helps me warm up my mouth yes, yes, and you know, exercise the Japanese muscles of my mouth. And so、uh, on mornings when I do have those kind of jobs,、mm -hmm. I always do a lot of shadowing using Hapa e Kaiwa. So, yeah, check out YouTube.、Uh, you know, even shadowing after me in some of the videos, I think will be a good level. But you also want to confirm the meaning, so having a, a Japanese translation、uh, would be helpful as well. We always read the comments and we always try to get back to the comments as quickly as we can. And again, we really, really, really appreciate all of the kind messages that you all leave for us. One person said they want to see a Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba Part 2. Yeah. Yeah, eventually we'll try to get to it. Uh, but I don't know, copyright issues. I'm kind of scared about that. So、uh, we'll see what happens. But again, we appreciate that comment as well. So thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye. <laughs>